In this video, we're going to be discussing the Trendelenburg test, which is a special test used in the assessment of gluteus medius tendinopathies, or weakness, and superior gluteal nerve palsies. And recall that the superior gluteal nerve innervates the gluteus medius muscle. To perform the Trendelenburg test, the patient's initially going to be standing, as you see right here, with bilateral lower extremity support. But then the patient will be instructed to switch from double leg support into single leg support, as you see right here. And throughout this video, I'm going to be defining the ipsilateral lower extremity as the weight-bearing lower extremity. So I'm weight-bearing on the left here. So the left lower extremity would be ipsilateral, meaning the right one over here, non-weight-bearing, is contralateral. And while the patient's in single limb support, you're going to be monitoring for contralateral pelvic drop. Now, the pelvic drop is very difficult to see here from the front, so typically you're going to observe this from the back. So again, right there, I am now in left single limb support, and that means this is my ipsilateral lower extremity. The right side is my contralateral lower extremity. And again, we're monitoring for contralateral pelvic drop. Now this picture over here on the left illustrates what happens normally when a person goes into single leg support. We're looking at a posterior view here, and so this is going to be right single leg support. Now whatever leg is weight bearing, that's the side where the gluteus medius has to activate. So if we're in right single limb support, we're going to have right gluteus medius activation, so ipsilateral gluteus medius. Following that, the gluteus medius is innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. So we also have ipsilateral superior gluteal nerve activation. So bottom line, whatever lower extremity is in weight bearing, you have ipsilateral gluteus medius and ipsilateral superior gluteal nerve activity. Now normally, when somebody goes into single limb support, that gluteus medius activates and you only get a little bit of pelvic tilt. What you actually see is about five degrees of ipsilateral drop and about five degrees of contralateral rise or contralateral elevation. Normally when we think of a muscle's action we think of the insertion being pulled toward the origin but that's only true when the movement occurs in the open chain. Gait, especially when we're talking about single limb support, occurs in the closed chain because our foot's in contact with the ground. So in closed chain, it's the opposite. The origin should actually be pulled toward the insertion. And so when the gluteus medius normally activates in single limb support, it's actually pulling the origin up here toward the insertion, and it's actually preventing that ipsilateral pelvic rise. Okay. But notice over here, when you have either gluteus medius weakness or a tendinopathy, or there's a superior gluteal nerve palsy, the origin is not able to be pulled towards the insertion. And so that origin essentially rises up, and that produces that ipsilateral pelvic elevation. And as a result of that ipsilateral pelvic elevation, you're going to have contralateral pelvic drop. And it's really that contralateral pelvic drop that's the main indicator of a positive Trendelenburg test. So how do you determine if a patient has significant contralateral pelvic drop? What you're going to do is you're going to come in here behind the patient. This is the easiest place to do it. And you're going to firmly palpate the lateral iliac crests. So the lateral iliac crest on the right and the lateral iliac crest on the left. Okay? And while maintaining your hand position there, you're going to have the patient go into single limb support. So this is left single limb support here. So what we should expect if there's no gluteus medius issues and no superior gluteal nerve issues is we should have a little bit of contralateral pelvic rise, just a little bit, maybe five degrees, and a little bit of ipsilateral pelvic drop, but only about five degrees. So more or less your palpating hands really shouldn't change positions relative to each other that much. But if I continue to firmly palpate, and I had a situation here where my left hand went up and my right hand went down, well, that would be because of ipsilateral pelvic elevation and that contralateral pelvic drop. And that would constitute a positive Trendelenburg test. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. 